couple of years ago, I was asked to become a member of the USCCA, and they gave me some literature. They showed me the journals, and I thought, this is really, really good. Very great organization that teaches their members how to handle firearms, weapons, and they have a lot of great articles about how to defend yourself, what to do if you're ever investigated. They asked me to be a part of the panel, and I said yes. It turns out it's one of the best decisions I ever made because about a year or two later, back in May of 2022, I met a young man named Omar. His family came to me in the middle of the night looking for some help because Omar at the time was 24 years old, had made all the right decisions in his life. He had done well at school. He had his own business as a carpenter. He was working as a security guard, and he was applying to become a law enforcement officer. Yet, in the middle of one of his jobs, when he took a break to step outside into the parking lot, he was ambushed. He was ambushed by a disgruntled patron of the bar. Somebody that was having a bad time, tough night, had already been removed from the bar, and then tried to get back in, fought with other people, including the people that he had been in the bar with. Omar quietly walked out to the parking lot to take a break, grab a bite to eat. He was ambushed. He was blindsided. This gentleman was wearing a motorcycle helmet, so you couldn't even see his face. And he violently attacked Omar, beat him, hit him, knocked him down to the ground. Omar, having made a really smart decision, a year earlier, having joined the USCCA, had a licensed firearm, and he was allowed to and lawfully carry it. And when he was assaulted, and when he was ambushed, and when he was beaten, he fell to the ground, pulled out his firearm, and fired four shots. He fired four shots within 13 seconds. First two shots were clear that he was defending himself because he was on the ground on his back. The second two shots, the prosecutors believed they weren't necessary, felt that the threat was gone. But anybody who knows anything about self-defense, and, and I know a lot because I've tried a lot of these cases, that was a decision that you get to make in a very short period of time. So we spent a lot of time working and reviewing the case. We started off with the family meeting me because Omar was in custody and doing whatever I could do to get him out of custody, get him released on bail or released on his own recognizance. First thing they did was they asked me if I were a member of the USCCA, and I am. So it worked out great because the program and the organization provides its members an opportunity to have an insurance cover the cost of their legal fees when they're on their break or when they're not in the capacity of working on their job. And this qualified Omar to be able to have his fees taken care of by the insurance coverage. And that worked out well because he was able to pay my fee, which was well over $50,000. So now I'm in court and I'm able to put together his package, all of his information. He had never been in trouble before. And something happened that hardly ever happens. We're able to get him released on his own recognizance after two days being in jail. And then we spent the next year and a half working on the case working on getting the prosecutors to understand it, to see the video, to see what we knew was a clear self-defense case. But that's a challenge. Once someone's charged with a case and investigated for a case, then they get sort of tough times dug in and they don't want to see it in a more objective way. But that's where my skills and my work over the last 32 years paid off because we went and we kept going. We were offered plea bargains. But the conversations I had with my client and the relationship we developed of trust, we knew that it was important for him to not have anything on his record. And after a year and a half of going back and forth with court and on the eve of getting ready to have a preliminary hearing, the prosecutors conceded. They conceded that Omar was defending himself. He had done everything right, and he shouldn't have to go through his life, like possibly having to go to trial or being convicted. So this is a wonderful ending to a lot of chapters that took place. And we're happy and we're thankful that we were able to be able to work with USCCA. I tell everybody that I talk to, all the people that I do my workshops with, is that if you're going to purchase a firearm, 
you're going to put yourself in a position to understand what a firearm is. You need to join this association. Their journals and their information provide you with all the history, the background, and education and opportunities to learn, to be able to learn from experts, give you articles to read. It helped me when I was making my arguments to the DA's office on why Olivar should not have to go through a trial and why his case should be dismissed. So it's important. It's the most important decision you can make. It's the type of decision that could save your life.